Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before you realize how fucking garbage this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel, you may want to seek some professional help. But in all seriousness, thank you very much for coming along. I do really appreciate you being here. For today's deck profile, we are going to be covering the Tri Brigade list that I've been playing for the last few weeks at Locals. Well, I say last few weeks, it's probably slightly less than that, but you get the picture. Now obviously this is still an early stage in the formats, there are many cards that may change. There's some already in this deck that I've identified that seem to be surplus to requirements, so in fact could well change already. But I wanted to bring you my deck profile anyway, so you can see exactly what I've been using, why things work well and what hasn't. We can also discuss some ratios and all that kind of stuff as well. Now before we go ahead, if you're watching today's deck profile and you're feeling inspired and maybe you'd like to go out and pick up some singles, you should check out the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. There will be a link down in the description and if you go ahead and use that, you'll get yourself a cheeky discount on the eBay store, courtesy of yours truly. And one final note before we continue, let me apologise if there are any crazy noises. My pug has been extra needy tonight and so he's sat right outside the room so you may get a little bit of his background noise, maybe some snoring, some grunting. I promise I'm not just covering up for my own weird noises. But I digress, let's get stuck in to the deck profile. So naturally we're going to start off with monsters. Uh, I think the lineup is pretty standard. We've got triple, fractal, uh, again pretty standard. I think you need to play three copies of it. Much the same for triple kit. Again, you just need to be able to foolish barrel stuff. This just helps you get there. Triple copies of Nerval. Uh, it's it's fucking great, this card. Uh, obviously, it searches, adding stuff to your hand. Um, obviously, if you play like bird variants and stuff, this is way more valuable as well. Just a really, really good card. You absolutely need to max out on it. And then just a couple of copies of Keras. I have seen some builds opting to go into a third so that they're a little bit better in the grind game. Honestly, I don't think that's necessary. Usually, the only time the grinding is going to come up is going to be the likes of the mirror match, which really is just way more dice roll dependent than anything else. So, I just feel like a lot of the time you really don't need the third. It's definitely the weakest one, but it's something that you could run if you really wanted to. And then to round off our standard monsters for the main deck, we have triple copies of Rescue Cat. That's right, we're going down this route. Honestly, I think triple Rescue Cat is really, really cool. Um, it's a card that I actually sometimes side out as well. Uh, depending on the matchup, uh, obviously it's local, so things are slightly different there. But it, it, in all seriousness, like it's a really, really good starter card. But there's a lot of the time where you know it's just whatever. It, it's a hand trap uh, bait. It's obviously you can just gamma them if they try like ash it or anything like that, which is really, really cool. It's got lots of cool little interactions. Just a really, really good card. That I think you need to have in there, and of course you can always slide it out if you feel that you don't need it. Now onto the hand traps, of course, gamma. And Driver, the package is absolutely mandatory. This card's absolutely insane. This pretty much just wins so many matches, it's unreal. Uh, so I think it's an absolute must-have in the deck, in my personal opinion. I've seen some lists cutting it. I think that's absolutely insane. We have triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, the best, most generic hand trap. I think this needs to be in every deck. Uh, this is like the staple. This is like the one card that I think you need three copies and basically... Every single deck, even decks that don't run many hand traps, this is the one you definitely want to have in there. Against rogue decks, it just ends their turn. Against better decks, it can do the same, or of course, it can slow them down enough so you can beat into them. And then our final hand trap slot goes to DD Crow. So, in the mirror, this is absolutely woeful at best. Um, but against many of the other matchups of this format, it's actually very, very strong. Of course, this is a bit of a flex spot. So if you're someone who doesn't want to run DD Crow, maybe you're just playing at locals and this isn't quite as strong, then of course you can opt this out. You could run something like Ghost Bell instead. I was running that for a little while, but I found that really it was only the mirror match that I was using it in. And of course they had Apollo on board, so a lot of the time you couldn't even hit the revolt with it, so it was kind of uh, dead and pointless to say the least. Whereas Crow, I find a little bit more universally better, at least where my locals is concerned, but definitely something that you could opt to change up. And that does round off our monster lineup for the main deck. Let's move on to the spells. So, triple copies of Tenki. Uh, it's Tenki. It just says Search Fractal, so there's nothing much more to add to that. Triple Pot of Prosperity. I think this is really, really important. I know a lot of people are running Desires, particularly if they want to save out and you know on a budget and all that i think that that can kind of hinder the deck's ability to grind this you usually have a few flex spots in your extra deck that you can afford to miss out on in order to draw deeper but honestly a lot of the time you're going to see the cards you need anyway 
And then triple copies of triple tactics talent. So this deck is an absolute hand trap magnet and so we're going to go ahead and punish our opponents every time they do it a lot of the time you'll be going first they'll hand trap you you're going to end up gambling them uh, and then you're going to be able to like triple tactics talent them later on and you're going to end up ripping they're going to be like three cards down out of their hand going into a solid board happens more often than you'd think incredibly powerful card i think it's a really really strong card for this deck and finally a single copy of call by the grave as i said Hand Trap Magnet, this card is absolutely wonderful. It's good in so many different matchups. I really wish they put this back to three. And on to our traps, more hand traps. That's right, infinite impermanence, of course, good going first or going second. An absolutely fantastic card, one that you really need to take advantage of in this format, in my personal opinion. We have two copies of Revolt. I've seen some people running three. Uh, there's times where I kind of want to run a three, and there's times where I really don't feel the need. Obviously, it's searchable, and opening it isn't the worst in the world. Uh, but right now, I think two is the good sweet spot. But I could definitely be talked into playing three. One is just absolutely incorrect. Um, the card's absolutely busted, for sure. And then finally, a single copy of Imperial Order, because playing your turn... And then setting this turn one and passing into your opponent is absolutely hilarious. Particularly with Sky Striker and the like doing the rounds at the moment. Very, very easy win button here. And if nothing else, it's a very, very easy side out card if you don't need it. After game one, a lot of the time this is going to come out. And obviously if you're going into time, it can make way for something a bit more impactful. Now onto the extra deck. This is where things start to get chopped up a little bit where I'm talking about cards that, you know, we could swap out. Or maybe ratios that would change. We'll get to that in a moment. So I have a single copy of Brom in here. I really, really want to up this to two copies. It comes up more than you'd think. Um, yeah, just a really strong card. I really would like to pop this up. Of course, it's mainly there that we're going to use it for the revolt effect. But as and when the likes of Bird Up and stuff really start to take off in the early next year, you're going to need it to be able to revive your Nerval and go off about your plays. It can do some stuff like that, but it doesn't come up as often in this particular build. I would, however, really like to up this to two. We have double copies of Ferragir, or Ferret as I prefer. Um, two copies seems fine. There's occasions where the third comes up, but I can't really justify it because most of the time it just doesn't happen. Uh, but again, the card's really strong, and I think two copies is about the sweet spot. We have a single copy of Rugal, the Silver Sheller. One is more than enough. You really only use it for that opening combo. There is also the benefit, of course, being able to bring stuff back whilst you've uh, whilst you've got your uh, Shreg on board and obviously been able to banish cards off your opponent's side of the field. So there is some benefits there, but it's just generally there for the combo lines of play. And speaking of Shreg, we've got two copies in here. There's times where I really want a third. Lots of people are going into that now. This card is just absolutely bonkers. It does so much for the deck. Absolutely incredible. Again, I really want to run a third. There's probably some cards that I could certainly cut for that. But at the moment, we're just running the two. Definitely something to consider, though. A single copy of Al Mirage. Uh, it's just there for that turn one play. Especially if you open just like a kit or a Nerval. It allows you to be able to play at least somewhat. We got double dragon boy. Uh, this is just for the combo. Of course, you're going to end on this a lot of the time in your turn one. A really, really strong card, really powerful in this particular deck, and very, very easy to get out. Else is here for when they, uh, what's it called? Contact in C? Is that the one? Anyway, that motherfucker. If they use that on you, this is your chance to out it. Of course, a lot of the time, if they're a smart player, they're going to do it after you've locked yourself in, so you won't be able to get rid of it. However, against the idiots who've decided to pick up on the idea and go, ooh, ooh I've got a win button for Tri Brigade. Well, there you go. I've got an answer for your win button, and now you don't know how to fucking beat the deck. But anyway, against the good players, this doesn't really do anything. Against the bad ones, it does plenty. It's, again, a card that could certainly be uh, taken out. It's just an opportunity to get out of a sticky situation. And frankly, we do have the spot to play with. <laughs> the Doom Eagle, whatever the fuck it's called. I don't know how to pronounce this. Anyway, big mechanical bird. Again, really easy to make. Uh, in turn one, it can be really good. It can help you lead into OTKs. It can help you deal with your opponent's graveyard, especially in decks that dump into it a lot. It's quite good in the mirror for that sort of thing, just shuffling stuff back and making their life a little bit more difficult. Now, there are more, more cards to come, so I'm going to go on to the final one of the standard lineup, and then we'll talk about some of the others I've got in here. So the final one to show you here is Appaloosa. Uh, again, this is a lot of the time something that you're going to end on in your turn one. Obviously, really strong card. It's pretty much an auto win against Drytron for the most part. Especially this backed up with hand traps is just really silly. So we've got some different cards in here. So the first thing to note is we don't have access code talker at the moment. I've uh, just been waiting for it to come in. So in the meantime, I've been running Boral Sword. Uh, just as a, a kind of win button, really. Obviously, if you go second, this just gives you an opportunity to play. And there are a couple of cards here that are kind of flex spots. Definitely something you could look at changing for yourself. I really like Topologic Trisbaner. 
Uh, really cool in principle. The issue with it is, is that it's good against stuff like Sky Striker. And if they're not a fucking idiot, they just Widow Anchor it. So again, this is probably a card that could be dropped possibly for another copy of Brum or even a Shureg. And uh, much the same as for Zeroboros. This is something I actually saw on Yishan's list. Uh, if you haven't checked him out, go check out Yishan McNabb. Uh, this is on his list. He was using it, um, I think, in place of an access code token. It gets absolutely massive. It banishes everything on the field, which you just don't care about because you can just revolt it all back. It's just big, uh, and it can be a real, real problem for your opponent. But again, it's a bit of a flex spot. It's it's kind of like an impact card. It's more of a luxury than anything else. Uh, and honestly, I think there's just better options. But it's decent if there's nothing else to go in there. And then our final extra deck card is Psy Frame Lord Omega. This card is absolutely fucking stupid. This card is so good. Um, the, the amount of games that this can win just on its own, just ripping that card out of your opponent's hand, uh, being able to deal damage in their main phase to banish it off is just really silly. Uh, of course, you can run Lambda in here as well. Definitely something to consider. I know a lot of people are picking that up. Really not a bad idea considering how powerful Gamma is in this deck. And of course, that goes even better with Omega as well. And of course, that rounds off the extra deck. As discussed, there are plenty of cards in there that can be changed. Plenty of flex spots. So we've got lots that we can play with and change up depending on what you want to do. But those are just some ideas about what I'm running and what you can consider running for yourself. And then because this is my actual deck profile, of course, we do have a side deck. That's something that you normally only get when I'm showing off my competitive lists or other people's competitive lists. So, there you go. So, we have some going second cards here. We have Pancratops. Uh, I don't really need to explain. This card is absolutely silly. Uh, we have two copies of Gadala. This is our way to out the... Uh, what's the deck that makes towers? Ignista. Uh, it doesn't seem to really do anything. I really haven't struggled with that deck so far. This is going to help you out it. Of course, it helps out the uh, Wind Barrier statue as well. If you play against the Burn Up matchup. doesn't come up a lot, but it's just an option that's there. We have triple copies of Artifact Lands here. When we go into the mirror and we open this, it's usually GG. This is a really, really strong card. It's not just powerful against this as well. There's plenty of other decks that it hurts as well. But primarily, this is going to help you win those mirror matches. Just two copies of Droll because that's all we had space for. Honestly, this doesn't come up an awful lot for me, but I know against a lot of the meta decks, this can be quite powerful. Um, I'd be almost tempted to drop it, but again, it's just for my locals, so that's pretty much why. Triple copies of Twin Twisters. This card is so incredibly free in this deck, and of course, there's a lot of back row going on at the moment. This just helps you get there. Of course, being able to discard your Tri Brigades off this is really fucking silly as well. We have a single copy of Harpy's Feather Duster, again, just for back row hate. One of the things you're going to uh, tend to struggle with if you're going to struggle with any games is other control decks. Other control decks that can grind, the likes of Sky Striker, which this can obviously help deal with, stuff like Eldritch, that kind of thing. This is just going to help you deal with them a little bit better. And then our final card for our side deck, Anti-Spell Fragrance. Fuck Sky Striker and fuck Pendulums. This deals with both of those quite nicely, quite heartily. It makes, it makes such joy in my heart. When I open this against a Sky Striker player and I flip it up and I just see the look of disgust in their face. Fuck you for thinking playing a deck with Engage and it is in any way acceptable. You get everything you goddamn deserve. You get you get this little smirky boy here. That's exactly what you get. But anyway, I'm going a little bit off topic there. got a little bit excited and ahead of myself. Of course, like I say, lots of flex spots. That's just my side deck for my locals. Of course, you can change that up depending on what the meta is where you are. And so, amigos, that is all for today's deck profile. Hopefully you found something useful in there. Hopefully you've at least found something that you fucking hate so you can tell me how bad I am at this game or maybe I'm playing something absolutely wrong. I don't really care either way. Thank you very much for making it this part of the video. You are one of the few who does. I realise I'm rambling a little bit. That's because I'm really fucking tired. But anyway, I'm going to stop wasting any more of your time. Thank you very much for coming along. Make sure you have hit subscribe and I will see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.